In this video, we will be reviewing a new method for obtaining NMR spectra called ultrafast NMR. Ultrafast NMR is a multidimensional, fast, single scan technique which operates by parallelizing the acquisition process. Simply put, this means that ultrafast NMR can be used to obtain 2D, 3D, and ND NMR spectra in under a second and within a single scan. That is, all data is acquired after exciting our sample only once. It does so by encoding the spin interactions using spatial gradients, and then uses gradients again during the acquisition to retrieve the encoded information. We begin by reviewing the general structure of a 2D experiment as formalized by Ernst. Here we can see a typical 2D experiment, cozy in this example. The experiment is divided into four stages, excitation, often preceded by some relaxation delay D1, followed by evolution, mixing, and finally acquisition. A typical 2D spectrum is obtained by repeating the experiment shown here, varying T1 incrementally with each iteration, for a total of n iterations. The recorded FIDs, that is, the free induction decays, are then arranged in a matrix, the rows of which correspond to the parameter T1 and the columns of which correspond to the measured time T2. The data is then Fourier transformed along both axes, revealing the hidden periodicities of our data, and a spectrum is obtained. The actual spectral information depends on the mixing sequence used. Popular 2D experiments include COSY, TOXY, NOSY, HSKC, and many more. 2D NMR experiments involve the acquisition of multiple data scans, regardless of sensitivity considerations. The large number of scans involved implies that a 2D experiment may take many minutes, partially because of the number of scans and partially because of the delay one needs to wait between scans. Our N experiments are carried out sequentially but what if we could find a way of running the different experiments in parallel? This is precisely the approach taken by ultrafast NMR. In ultrafast NMR, the sample is physically partitioned, with the use of a gradient, into different slices. Each slice evolves with a different T1 time after being excited. Then, these spatially encoded interactions are unraveled during the acquisition. At the heart of the method lies its extensive use of spatial gradients, which are the key element used to address each slice individually. There are, therefore, two questions to answer. The first is, how can we achieve this sequential evolution? The second is, once we've done so, how can we make use of it? It is important to realize that the acquired NMR signal originates from the entire sample. What we need is somehow a way of decoding the information slice by slice. However, unlike excitation, which can use selective pulses, there is no such thing as a selective acquisition. Unlike most stories, ultrafast NMR's tale is best served when told from the middle. We'll set aside for the time being the question of how to assign a different T1 evolution time to each slice and examine the question of how to make use of it. We will deal with the issue of excitation a few slides down the road. What sense can be made of the excitation scheme presented here? Once excited to the xy plane, each spin begins processing with its off resonance frequency, omega naught. The total phase the spin acquires in the xy plane equals its off-resonance shift times the time it spends in the xy plane. Since the spins in each slice spend a different amount of time in the xy plane, each slice will acquire a different phase. The phase increases linearly with position, from its lowest value at the top to its highest value at the bottom. Thus, our phase is proportional to z, the distance along the sample's axis. It is also proportional to the chemical shift. The greater the chemical shift, the greater the phase accumulated by each slice. 
We can visualize this as follows. Here we see two different samples, each having a different chemical shift. The z-dependence of the phase means the spins are wound in a helical shape around the z-axis. The chemical shift dependence means that the greater the chemical shift, the greater this winding is. Having excited and wound our spins this way, we apply whatever mixing sequence we desire to our sample and then acquire. To understand the basic idea behind acquisition, let us assume that we haven't applied any mixing sequence at all. Our basic acquisition block is shown on the right. It is comprised of a gradient oscillating between a positive and a negative value. This basic block is repeated many times during acquisition, but for the time being, let's try and figure out what happens in a single block. The effect of a gradient on our excited spins is to impart a linear z-dependent phase to the spins. In other words, the positive gradient unwinds them, then the negative gradient reverses its action. Recall that the signal we acquire is proportional to the sum over the xy plane magnetization in our sample. For the majority of the acquisition, the spins will destructively interfere due to their varying phases and our signal will be effectively zero. However, when the gradient unwinds the spins completely, we will observe a gradient echo. Different chemical shifts will form an echo at different times, owing to their different windings. Let's see an animated demonstration of this effect.